my favorite biology students. Today we are going to review incomplete dominance. I put together a chart that compares complete dominance versus incomplete dominance side by side. Please keep in mind most of the problems we do in class are complete dominance problems. With complete dominance, the dominant allele completely masks or hides the recessive allele. As a result, in the heterozygous form, when an individual inherits one dominant allele and one recessive allele, the phenotype results in the dominant trait. In contrast, in incomplete dominance, the dominant allele does not completely mask or hide the recessive trait. So when you are in the heterozygous form, it results in a new phenotype. Because while the dominant allele shows up, it does not completely hide the recessive allele, so usually you get a blend of colors. With complete dominance, you only end up with two phenotypes, the dominant color and the recessive color. However, with incomplete dominance, you end up with three phenotypes because you have the dominant color, the recessive color, and then the blend of the dominant and recessive colors that show up in the heterozygous form. So, for example, in flowers, especially snapdragon flowers and roses, if the color red is dominant to the color white, in complete dominance, if you have the homozygous dominant genotype, you would be red in color. That would be your phenotype. If you were heterozygous for genotype, again, it would be red in color because the one dominant allele is the allele that shows up and is expressed, and the recessive allele is completely hidden. Thus, you only get the white recessive color when the individual inherits two recessive alleles. You end up with two phenotypes only, red or white. With incomplete dominance, however, it's different. If you are homozygous dominant, the phenotype is red. If the flower is heterozygous, it ends up being pink in color, and if you are homozygous recessive, the phenotype ends up being white. Thus, you get a new phenotype, a new color for the heterozygous form. Because while red shows up due to the dominant allele, white also shows through, so red and white blend together to make pink. Now, let's take a look at some example problems. In number one, it is talking about incomplete dominance in regards to flower color in snapdragons. Red is incompletely dominant over white, which results in the pink genotype for the heterozygous form. Since red is the dominant color, we will use the letter R to represent the alleles. If the flower has the genotype big R, big R, or homozygous dominant, it will result in the red phenotype or red flower color. If the flower has a genotype big R, little r, or the heterozygous form, we know that it will give us a pink phenotype or pink flower color. If the flower has a genotype of little r, little r, which is homozygous recessive, it will have a phenotype of white or a white flower color. So if we are crossing two pink individuals, we would cross these two genotypes. Without doing the Punnett square, I know that my genotype is going to be one big R, big R, two big R, little R's, and one little R, little R. 
because when you are crossing two heterozygous individuals, that is always the answer. It's a shortcut. You don't have to do the Punnett square. You automatically know you're going to have one homozygous dominant individual, two heterozygous individuals, and one homozygous recessive individual. Some teachers may write that as one out of four, big R, big R, two out of four, big R, little r's, or one and one out of four, little r, little r's, or even in ratio form as one homozygous dominant to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. The phenotype will result in careful now because we are dealing with incomplete dominance. So you end up with one red flower, two pink flowers, and one white flower. Now to answer the problem that the question asks. What is the probability they will have red offspring white offspring and pink offspring? Well, the probability for the red offspring would be 1 out of 4 or 25 percent. The probability of the pink offspring would be 2 out of 4 or 50 percent and the probability of the white offspring once again would be 1 out of 4 or 25 percent. So this is the answer to the question that is asked. If you take a look at question number two, while it does not mention incomplete dominance, the way in which you know this is an incomplete dominance problem is because it mentions three phenotypes, black, white, and gray. Black is the dominant color, so we will use the letter B. So big B, big B would give us black for our phenotype. Big B, little b would give us gray for our phenotype, and little b, little b would give us white. Because when you cross black with white, it results in the gray offspring, letting you know that the heterozygous form is gray. So you're crossing a gray mouse with a white mouse. If you do the Punnett square for your genotype, you would get two big B little b's or two little b little b's, which might be written as two out of four big B little b, two out of four little b little b's, or some teachers might write it, write it in ratio form, zero homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, two homozygous recessive. The phenotype would be two gray for the big B little b genotype and two white for the homozygous recessive genotype. So some teachers might write that two out of four gray and two out of four white. To answer the question of what is the probability of them having black offspring versus gray offspring versus white offspring, the probability of black is 0%. Impossible, not going to happen. The probability of gray is 2 out of 4 or 50%, and similarly the probability of white is 2 out of 4 or 50%. So this is the answer to what the question is asking. I hope this helped you better understand incomplete dominance. And remember, soccer is the best sport ever. Have a great night!